Digura. So I got an early ferry this morning, uh, about 6.30, something like that, and was told to come down early for breakfast, but um, I checked out and everything early. It's about 5 to 6, and I asked the guy at the front desk, um, do you know where breakfast is? And he says, I don't know. So that's where we're at, and uh, it looks like we'll probably skip breakfast here and head down to the ferry, and we'll see you guys in the other island. 6 a.m. Yeah. Any last words? Island. No. Everything's good. Disorganized on the uh, exit, but uh, kind of getting used to that around here. So. Yeah, we were told to wake up early for breakfast. Chef fell asleep, I guess, back into his uh, little morning nap. He didn't show, hence no breakfast. Woke up early for nothing. The only ferry of the day leaves at 6:30 a.m. and now it's 6:30 and we are still on the way. It is the only ferry. Is really? I thought there was another one late afternoon. No, no there isn't. Fun, fun. So what happened? Okay, well thank you very much. Thank you. And good luck. <laughs> Last minute, you made it. Last minute. <laughs> Thank you. Is that for me? <laughs> yeah, good. Sir, this is your breakfast. Wow. from our populated island called Dagura and we hopped on one of these little carts here in Mali and now the driver's gonna just jet us down to the uh, airport uh, well the ferry back to the airport because I'm on the mainland here in Mali so you can really see how Mali is the central link even though it's sometimes hundreds uh, of miles away from all these other little islands it does, it really is the connector to everything here in the Maldives. Well, Yulu's gone in there to get the tickets here for the quick ferry ride across to uh, the airport. Man, things go pretty slow here. I mean, it, it is pretty much island life. Everybody, man, no one's in a rush to do anything here. Wake up, have a coffee, break some leaves. Right guys, so I'm back here in Mali. Now, uh, we're gonna be doing the second part of this trip. And as you can see behind me here, these are all individual booths for the luxury islands. We got big names like the Santerra, Munfushi, One and Only, uh, the Marina, the W Maldives, Coco Resort. I mean, a lot of big names, St. Regis, Dusitani. And this is what happens when you come to these resorts, they have their own check-in process. Lounges at the hotel, and it's kind of a seamless service. So that's how it works here. You check in with these guys behind me, they take your bags, they run you up to a kind of like a business suite, and then you get onto the seaplane to enter the resort. So you can already see the different level of service. Uh, this is the seaplane company that was allegedly purchased from uh, the Chinese the last time I heard. Um, 
called Trans Maldivian Airways. They actually feed all these islands uh, behind me here. So you can see resorts we fly to. Quite a bit where all the major resorts are. One thing that's uh, a little bit sad is um, last time I was here, it was very vibrant and fun. And the energy was good and everything. I actually haven't seen any Chinese people here at all, which is somewhat sad. So basically what we're doing right now is walking out to the seaplane and you can see this is the other side of the airport and all these are the seaplanes that feed the entire 26 atolls all around the Maldives. There are a lot of islands here, uh, luxury islands. Last time I checked anywhere between 600 to 800 luxury resorts uh, and that's not including the populated island which we were on the other day. There's many of those as well. You can show your boarding pass to my colleague. Okay, it's thank you. It's a direct you. flight to the valley. Great, thanks. Basically now I'm going out to the seaplane. The only way to really get to this island is by one of these, uh, we'll call them uh, seaplanes because the distance is just way too far to just me and this one. These only take about 45 minutes to get to the island. Expensive, sometimes they can go anywhere from two to four hundred dollars return, but it's kind of like an adventure, lots to see. When you're flying over top, we'll try to get some footage for you guys. I wouldn't look at it as just a transfer, look at it as an experience for sure. You can Which one is the best seat? Which left uh, or right? First two rows is pretty good. First two rows. Otherwise, the engines will come in the way. For good picture, right? Yeah. Hello. I'm gonna go straight to the business class, right in front, next to the captain. <laughs> Are you going up there? Ooh. Looks pretty easy. I think I could. I could operate this. And these planes only fit about 20 people maximum and uh, they bring all your luggage on here. Now, Tiny, we, look, yeah. there's no... We might have uh, one or two stops. Sometimes uh, these planes feed two or three islands within the same area. So let's check it out. Let's see what we're going to get up to. And I hope you guys uh, are going to be able to see what I see from above here. And we'll show you some pretty stunning um, resorts from above. That is for certain. the airplane here behind me you can see that's the seaplane and uh, it's pretty much hands-off now I mean 
you'll never probably put your hands on your luggage once you get off that airplane because it's so seamless. Uh, the resort's done a very good job. You can automatically see the difference here. Um, so now we've landed on the island. It's about a 45 minute to one hour flight. And uh, we're here and uh, we're gonna check in.